let's talk now about Trump's tax return. Unless you've been living under a rock all of this weekend, well, the New York Times had a bombshell story that struck like a lightning bolt. Could call it a September or October surprise to the election. Trump's tax returns leaked to the New York Times. And it was a big bombshell story. Here is the story in the New York Times. Long concealed records show Trump's chronic losses and years of tax avoidance. Now, on the surface, there are four kind of big takeaways on all of this. Uh, for one, you know, for a billionaire, right, Trump paid very little income tax. Basically, in 10 to, 10 to 15 years up to the 2016 election, Trump paid basically zero federal income tax. Um, he made a lot of money from The Apprentice. He brought in $427 million, including licensing, endorsement deals of his personal brand. Uh, the New York, New York Times also found that he took tax deductions on $70,000 that he spent on his hair, on hairstyling for his television appearances. I guess it takes a lot of money to tame that hair. Um, also, golf is not a good business for Trump. The report found that many of the president's signature properties, including his various golf courses and hotels, have been losing millions of dollars every year, which is how he gets lower taxes, because he takes big losses. Um, and also, he's got a $300 million bill outstanding in loans that he's personally responsible for. That's going to be coming due in the next four years, the New York Times found. So those are the kind of the big takeaways here. There's a lot more to this. But the way that I wanted to treat this segment is different than how you would find it treated on the main, in the mainstream media. And that's why you watch this show, I hope. So if you watch the mainstream media, if you watch CNN or MSNBC or Fox or any of those, what you're going to find out is they're going to treat it one of two ways, right? Well, he's a great, he's, you know, he, he, he's, he's in the middle of this audit. That's why it's not been released yet. The IRS is still going through this audit where he took a credit of $72 million and they're looking into that and that's been like a 10-year audit or something. That's one way. The other way is that, holy cow, the guy hasn't paid anything in taxes. This is corruption. This guy should be paying tons in taxes. He's a billionaire. How is he paying nothing in taxes? That's like one of two ways you're likely to see it treated in the mainstream media. But the reason that I wanted to do this segment is because the mainstream media doesn't understand taxes. When you watch most news anchors on television, they are collecting a paycheck, okay? And they do not understand how the tax code works in this country. They also don't understand deductions, passive loss, capital gains. Some of them do, if you watch some of the business networks. But they're always coming from a frame of reference of the stock market. Okay, that's a, that's a, that, that's a capital gains tax uh, television show. Okay, people make money on, on, their, on, their, on their stocks, and that's how those people work and operate. They don't understand real estate most of the time, and they don't understand these types of losses. Now, we can moralize all we want about what he should have paid, and that's not going to be my job today. My job, though, I think, is to talk about how the president has taken advantage of a tax code that is structured for the wealthy. The bottom line is the tax code in the United States is built to benefit entrepreneurs and business owners. There are all kinds of exemptions, not even loopholes, there are exemptions, there are tax deductions, there are abilities to write off losses over many, many years, which is what it looks like President Trump has been doing with his golf losses and other business losses. So you, again, you can moralize and say, he's a terrible businessman. He's, he paid $750 in taxes. So the mainstream media will likely present it this way to you, which is this. This is how many in two, 2017, according to these tax returns, Donald Trump paid just $750 in taxes. $750. How many of you watching right now paid more in taxes than President Trump? Tell me. Tell me. How many of you right now watching have pay paid more than Donald Trump in taxes? My hand's up. I'm sure most of you, your hands are up. 
So how did this happen? And when you compare this with how these other senators and Joe Biden, Joe Biden in 2017 paid $3.7 million in taxes, which is kind of stunning to me. Kamala Harris, $516,000. Bernie Sanders, $343,000 in taxes. Elizabeth Warren, two sixty eight. dollars Donald Trump, just $750. So Elizabeth Warren uh, took to Twitter and said, Donald Trump paid just $750 in income taxes in 2016 and 2017. He knows better than anyone that there's one set of rules for the wealthy and giant corporations and another for hardworking Americans. And instead of using his power to fix it, he's taken advantage of it at every turn. Okay, so there's a couple of things to unpack here. She's right that instead of spending his time fixing what is a massive amount of inequality in this country, where the corp like corporations and why Amazon is paying nothing in taxes is because they are taking enormous losses and deductions by building real estate and hiring people. That part of it is true. And the tax code in this country is written to incentivize that. The argument is if there are no incentives for businesses to build a building, hire employees, that that type of thing gets squashed in our country, and we have a lack of hiring, we have a lack of employment, because businesses are not incentivized through tax incentives to come into a city and build. We see it all the time. We see it, you know, uh, oh, this building is coming to this opportunity zone because there's an opportunity tax zone. So we can have a frank discussion about the tax code. But I want to target the way that the mainstream media will likely spin this story, which is that he's a tax cheat, perhaps. Again, there's an audit going on. We don't know. And there's a big question about mortgage fraud. And suddenly, and, you know, Michael Cohen, of course, reportedly had that, you can see it, the $4 billion brand value of Donald Trump, that he's worth $4 billion. Like, where did that arbitrary number come from? And were they using that arbitrary number in which to get hundreds of million, millions of dollars in loans, which he'll have to pay back? That would be known as mortgage fraud, right? That he's lying about an inflated value of his brand. Who's to say that the Trump brand is worth $4 billion? It looks like on paper, actually, right now, he's not a billionaire. That's a big takeaway. That, in fact, his net worth actually may have slipped backwards in the negative because of all of the outstanding debt that he owes and all of the losses that he's been claiming. We can have a frank discussion about his hypocrisy. So let's do that. Let's have a frank discussion about Donald Trump's hypocrisy here. In 2012, when President Obama had made a lot of money from his book sales, Donald Trump took to Twitter and pointed this out on Twitter saying, look at this. This was 20, 2012. He said, half of Americans don't pay income tax despite crippling government debt. So he tweeted this article out. How outrageous that half of Americans, those wealthy Americans, really don't pay income tax. And then he went further with a tweet against Obama in 2012. Who wants to raise all our taxes? Barack Obama does. He only pays 20% of his $790,000 salary. Do as I say. Not as I do. Hypocrite, right? And at the very same time, he's paying nothing in taxes, literally nothing in taxes, because he's claiming enormous losses. Again, we can have a discussion about the type of businessman he is, that all of his businesses seem to be failures, and he just takes enormous losses to offset income. So he makes hundreds of thousands of dollars from NBC and The Apprentice, but then his golf courses are running huge losses. Well, guess what? That offsets the amount of money he gets from a paycheck. And see, what mainstream media doesn't understand is just frankly how the tax code works. They don't understand that when we talk about taxing the rich, when Elizabeth Warren talks about taxing the wealthy, what we're talking about is just taxing lawyers and doctors and people that get a paycheck from a hospital people that are W-2 employees. 
What they're not talking about, because they can't, is how do you tax Warren Buffett? How do you tax a Donald Trump who takes advantage of these losses that are in the IRS tax code? Do you start to eliminate losses for businesses? Do you start to say that, hey, if this business suffered over the last five years, they didn't make a profit because they were, you know, they just, they were breaking even. They invested in a new building. They bought equipment. They were working and they were basically breaking even. They were able to claim those losses on their taxes and that helps keep a small business alive. Are we going to remove those deductions? Are we going to raise the corporate, corporate tax rate again? That only does so much. So how do you actually create a fair and equitable tax code that doesn't charge the working class more than Donald Trump? That's the discussion we should be having. But to come at this as an angle that, well, he didn't pay anything in taxes. Yes, well, that's how the tax code is written. It was written this way under Reagan. It's been written this way for years. And guess what? Republicans and Democrats have basically kept it the same with very little change. And both parties will pay lip service to wanting to change it, but they're all wealthy. They all have real estate. They all do these things. So Joe Biden, how did he make all this money? He paid $3.7 million in taxes. That's a lot of tax money. That means he made you know, a lot more than that. Three and four times that. Well, how did he make it? In 2017, he made it from giving speeches. He made it from selling books. Well, guess what? People will say, well, okay, there's two ways the media will spin this. Wow, Joe Biden needs some better accountants to take advantage of the tax code, like Donald Trump did, paying nothing in taxes. Or the other way they'll spin it, if you watch MSNBC or otherwise, is to say, look at Joe Biden, what a good American he is, how much in taxes he's paid. One of two ways. But what they're missing is the subtlety of this. What they're missing is that because he didn't have any losses, when you sell books, what, what, do you, what loss are you going to claim? Equipment? You know, no, he sold books. Like, that's it. There's no losses from selling books. There's no losses from giving a speech. He made $100,000 from this speech or that speech. There's no losses from that. That's just profit. And he has to pay taxes on that. Donald Trump was making profit at The Apprentice, but then he had multiple business entities. And look, I don't have the access to the ins and outs of his tax returns. Meanwhile, the president calls it fake news anyway, so we don't know, you know, this is a New York Times story. But he's able to offset all of that revenue by his multiple failed businesses. It's almost like he has these failed businesses on purpose. Is that illegal? I don't know. Doesn't seem that way. Unless there was that mortgage fraud piece built into it. But if he's running businesses that are just terrible, and he's a terrible businessman, and he's able to use those losses from those other businesses to offset his income from The Apprentice and other places, that's the way the tax code works. So we should be having a discussion about how to have a fair and equitable tax system in this country. I covered that story last week up in, you know, up in Illinois, looking at a fair tax on their ballot. How can businesses be responsible for paying more in capital gains, not being able to offset as many losses? I mean, these are bigger questions that the mainstream media is not going to answer. For his part, Joe Biden, or for his part, uh, Bernie Sanders came out and said this in a tweet. He said, what a shock that Donald Trump only paid $750 a year in taxes when 30 million Americans are out of work and it's incredibly difficult for people to uh, get a leg up in this country. when They're just clawing, 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 and the rich just continue to get rich. This is exactly what Bernie Sanders said in the town hall the other night. I want everybody to remember, you are not living in a poor developing country. You are living in the wealthiest country in the history of the world. But you are living, as Hannah indicated, in a nation 
in which the people on top are doing phenomenally well, phenomenally well. Never have they done better. More income and wealth inequality today than at any time in the modern history of this country. Trump's tax returns, president says that it is fake news and that he, he will release the taxes once this audit is completed with the IRS. The IRS has said that that audit has completed. So why have they not released it now that these are out from the New York Times? It's time. It's been a long time. And by the way, the fact that we know all of these other tax returns, we know Kamala Harris's tax returns, we know Bernie Sanders, because they're all public. You can easily click on them and find them online. But you could never find Donald Trump's. And clearly, it's because he doesn't want people to, he wants people to have this image of him. He wanted people to have this image of him as a billionaire, as a billionaire, brilliant businessman. But we now know that that's not the case. It shows a completely different image of him. And I want to start to hear, I'd love to hear from other billionaires who are successful. I would love to hear from Mark Cuban on this story. I'm sure we will. And once he kind of dives into it and looks at this, when you have other successful uh, Wall Street billionaires who get a, hand, get a chance to look at this, I'd love to hear their thoughts. How you could be running basically massive losses and still owe hundreds of millions of dollars and get money. The, the big question I have and so many other people have is how are you able to get money through a loan when you're showing enormous losses and personal debt? Who, what bank is going to give you a hundred million dollar loan? Because of your brand? Four billion dollars in a value that, that Michael Cohen said they basically created as part of the investigation. These are documents he turned over in the, uh, in the, in the investigation. Four billion dollars, that's how much his brand is worth? Maybe. But where did that number come from? And or did they artificially inflate that number in order to get that loan, which a lot of people are saying that's what New York prosecutors are looking at, because that, my friends, would be mortgage fraud. So again, tomorrow night, the presidential debates, the first presidential debate, clearly this topic is going to come up for discussion. And boy, I can't wait to see it calling it the most consequential. Uh, I don't know that it's going to be the most consequential debate in U.S. history, given the fact that so many millions of Americans have already voted. And basically, these poll numbers have remained fairly consistent and steady now for months. So it'll be interesting to see. It'll be certainly theater. How many of you are going to watch it? Of course, we will have a full recap on Wednesday's show here of what unfolds on the debate stage on Tuesday night. But we are certainly going to hear about these tax returns. So that is the very latest on these tax returns. Don't forget to become a channel member. Very easy to do to become a VIP member here. We have our VIP chat Fridays with our uh, channel members, our channel member only chat on Fridays. So just go to uh, our, there you go, right there on the screen. Morninginvest.com slash join is how you can become a channel member and support independent journalism. The things that you will not see talked about and discussed, you will not see them talking about the tax code in this way um, on you know, on CNN. You're just not. So thank you so much for your support of our channel and our show.